Hello, welcome to Prime Business with me, Pius Kojo Baka. The National Petroleum Authority is assuring consumers of enough supply of LPG despite concerns being raised by the Marketers Association over what it describes as some bureaucracy in the petroleum sector. The marketers had earlier warned of a possible shortage of the product due to the current state of LPG reserves in the country and challenges with new rules for importing domestic gas. But reacting to the matter, communications manager of the NPA, Mohammed Abdul Kudus, maintains there is enough supply to meet demand. We have two sources to this particular product. One is the local source that is coming from Atrabo. Then we have another that we import into the country. Atrabo has not shut down. Uh, there is a challenge in the, the quantity of volume that we are expecting from Atrabo. Uh, the understanding we've had from Atrabo is that hopefully by next week they would have uh, gone back to the full production that they used to do. And that can help in the artificial shortage that we are currently witnessing from the enclave of the western uh, part of this country. What is happening is that uh, the procedure was to be loading for the people within a particular enclave to pick the product from around the um, atrabo. But because of that uh, inability to uh, have the expected production, we've now actually exempted the, uh, the cross-zonalization uh, across so people can now come to Tema. So BRVs can come to Tema and lift the product and send them to the um, Western region so that consumers out there can get it. So the issue that we see in Western region is artificial. It is not something that is of national character at all. And like I said from the beginning, we have more than enough in the country to meet the demands of the people. The issue is just about a certain technicality around distribution. Um, that is as a result of the reduction in the volumes that we were expecting from Atwabu. Now, Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam has reiterated government's commitment to align the country's investments with sustainable development and climate resilience. According to him, this will guide both private and public investments into projects that promote low carbon growth and support the country's climate action. He was speaking at the 2024 Accra SDG Investment Fair. Here's a report. Launch event themed Unlocking Green Growth, Financing Future Through Sustainable Investment brought together key stakeholders from the financial sector, government agencies, and international partners to explore how this new taxonomy can accelerate Ghana's transition to a climate resilient economy. Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam indicated that the taxonomy will provide clear guidelines for identifying sustainable economic activities. But in doing this, we should do it in such a way that the economy is not uh, negatively affected. Rather, uh, the transition must uh, provide opportunity for harnessing the potential uh, associated with uh, uh, low carbon economies and also to be able to create green jobs. Uh, but you cannot do this without accessing uh, sustainable financing or green financing. And this is why the government through this taxonomy will provide that guide and work with the, the industries that impact our environment heavily to achieve uh, eventually a low carbon uh, economy uh, that creates uh, jobs, that creates wealth and income, and that creates uh, better opportunities for, for our people. Ghana's launch of the Green Finance Taxonomy is seen as a significant step in advancing the climate resilient development and positioning it as a leader in green finance on the African continent. The Petroleum Commission is still engaging various players in the oil and gas sector to minimize the practice of emitting carbon dioxide into the environment. This is to show commitment to the global energy transition by enforcing laws including the payment of carbon dioxide tax and also reducing gas flaring on the oil fields. Engineer Che Bafo is in charge of metering and inspection at the Petroleum Commission and has been speaking to Joy Business at an upstream fiscal metering system here in Accra. The seminar aims at creating a platform for stakeholders to share ideas on reviewing some regulations in the oil and gas sector, especially fiscal metering. Speaking to Joy Business after making a presentation, Engineer Che Bafo 
engineer in charge of Tesco metering and inspection at the Petroleum Commission disclosed that oil exploration firms are permitted to flare at an allowable limit in order to control environmental sustainability. He believes the payments of the carbon levy can help control flaring. The state was trying to align itself with its um, energy transition policy, the public one. So in line with that, there will be some expectation that um, by virtue of the, the project we signed ourselves onto, that we would have to pay some sort of tax relating to CO2. Now for the upstream sector, our avenues for CO2 um, is through our burning, through burning. And through burning, burning means flaring on the facility. So emissions, leaks, seeps, those type of things will have to be measured. Now in meeting that, we need to start looking at the guidelines that um, that back, that back buttress that particular activity, which is the flaring. And of course, flaring is not a routine flaring. We don't have routine flaring in Ghana. But if there's any at all, we need to measure it to be able to demonstrate to the world that uh, this is how much we are um, emitting in relation to CO2. According to the Petroleum Commission, both Ghana and the partners lose huge sums of money in the event that measurements are wrongfully calibrated. He, however, assured that the partners have put in place measures to reduce exposure to losses. 0.05% offset, of course, was close to 400,000 USD a year. We don't want that on either party. Somebody is always losing if there's mismeasurement. So that's what we are trying to, to reduce. Is this a loss to the state or to the company? It can be everybody. Everybody's losing. The state will lose, the entities will lose. There's always going to be a loss if there's mismeasurement, especially systematic errors within measurement. The seminar was also used to foster effective collaboration among partners. Away from the energy sector, the National Insurance Commission is making a call on stakeholders to put in more effort to support the growth of the insurance industry in Ghana. According to the commission, although the sector is projected to generate a gross premium of about 10 billion cities by the end of 2024, this is lower than the growth experienced in many other African countries. Speaking at the launch of the Deloitte School for Actoral Excellence, Head of Reinsurance at the National Insurance Commission, Esther Ama, charged stakeholders in the insurance sector to introduce more innovative products. Here's a report. The Deloitte School of Actuarial Excellence aims at supporting industry players close the skills gap in the insurance sector with the use of the new standard IFRS 17. According to the National Insurance Commission, Ghana's insurance industry is expected to grow along with the expansion of the economy. Speaking on behalf of the Commissioner, the head of reinsurance at NIC, Esther Ama, charged players to take advantage of opportunities in the economy to attract more people into the sector. Our market is projected to generate gross return premium way in excess of 10 billion cities in 2024. But this is relatively small compared to some of our peers within the continent. Therefore, more effort is needed by all stakeholders, including Deloitte, to grow the industry at a rapid but sustainable pace. Ladies and gentlemen, as the economy expands, it is expected that individuals and businesses will have a greater capacity to purchase insurance products to protect their assets and mitigate risks. Additionally, the government's initiatives to promote uh, public-private partnerships in sectors like healthcare and agriculture should drive the demand for insurance coverage. Therefore, let's make good use of these opportunities to grow our market. Country managing partner of Deloitte, Daniel Kodiowusi, explains the school is part of Deloitte's contribution to the growth of the sector. There was no way we could leave them like that and that we needed to carry them through into the subsequent years. So it's, it's the need that we identify the gaps that we picked up from implementation of I-5-17 uh, that we, we realized that we need to continue and that's why we are setting up a school. Um, the aim is... Um, to pick up especially uh, students that are completing school and then also those within the industry to just run those practical training just to give them the practical sense of what it actually means um, and, and, and that's exactly what is driving this. Meanwhile, the National Insurance Commission is making efforts to foster collaboration with sector players to build more confidence in the insurance industry. The chief executive of Lede HR, Dr. Ellen Hagan, is entreating organizations to review their standard operating procedures to enhance customer service delivery in the country. 
According to her, businesses must prioritize customers' needs to ensure the continuity and growth of their ventures. She was speaking at the third edition of the International Customer Service Summit. The International Customer Service Summit brought together experts in the customer service industry to share best practices and strategies for delivering exceptional customer experiences aimed at addressing common challenges and gaps in the industry. Participants were urged to leverage digital tools to enhance service delivery. Delivering an address, keynote speaker Dr. Ellen Hagan encouraged businesses to evaluate their processes and make changes to prudently respond to the needs of customers. We've all had the saying the customer is always right. But today the question is not just about whether the customer is right, it's about whether we are building our systems to reflect that reality. Are we making the customer experience easy, seamless and enjoyable? Or are we too so focused on our own processes? that we forget the most critical factor, the customer. In a world of increasing competition and shrinking patience, organizations that fail to prioritize the customer's experience are at risk of falling behind. But the good news is that the solutions to these challenges are within reach, and they start reviewing and refining our, it must start with reviewing and refining our internal processes, particularly through the development and consistent application of standard operating procedures, SOPs. Convener of the summit and chief executive of Customer Service Africa, Fresla Wellington, called on businesses to invest into training their human resources to enhance the quality of service delivered to customers. Some of the challenges within the industry that are having is lack of empowered customer uh, service professional, lack of customer-centric leadership because leadership starts from the top. If we have leaders that are customer-centric, they are able to empower their team to do likewise. And we also have employees who are not empowered through training. We have uh, teams that don't really understand the products and services that are being offered and we believe that these thought-provoking messages or speeches from our speakers will empower the CEOs and managers and senior uh, level management that are here for the third edition to go back to their various organizations and industry and empower their team by leading by example. The International Customer Service Summit was themed Customer Experience, Perception versus Reality. In more business news, the African Continental Free Trade Area says it will commence the disbursement of its adjustment fund to Ghana or any other member state that wishes to take advantage of the gamut of financing options available under the initiative. The AFTA adjustment fund was designed to provide short to medium term financial support to state parties and eligible private sector projects that may be adversely affected by declining fiscal revenues as a result of tariff reductions and reduced competitiveness arising from trade liberalization. Secretary General of AFTA, Wamkele Meni, at a news conference in Rwanda, told journalists that his outfit has raised $1 billion so far. He further revealed that plans are in place to meet the $10 billion commitment for the fund. Early next year is when we expect that the, the disbursements will commence. We will wait for the board to, to tell us uh, when they are ready. I believe it will be early, uh, very early next year. A billion dollars for a, a continent as big as ours is, is obviously uh, uh, not much, but it is a good start. We will not be able to boil an ocean from the very beginning. So we will have to mobilize more development finance institutions, more commercial banks to invest in the fund, particularly the, um, the credit pillar of the fund. And that's where I, I foresee that we, we will have uh, success in mobilizing our private sector, commercial banks, private equity firms to invest uh, in the fund, uh, ourselves, the AFC of Trade Secretariat and African Bank will go on a, uh, uh, a roadshow to talk to investors across the continent to have them invest in, um, in the adjustment fund so that more and more countries 
can be eligible uh, for the support that they need. The, the guided trade. Well, I'm killing many there. Now, World Fish Consultant and CEO of Fossil Farms, Evans Danso, has stated that Ghana's fisheries and aquaculture industry has the potential to generate over 10 billion jobs if properly harnessed. Now, we expressed concern over the slow progress in the fisheries sector, which has led to an inability to meet the growing demand for the produce. Mr. Danso was speaking on the Joy Business Masterclass Agribusiness Series focused on fish farming. Ghana started very well. As, uh, following Egypt as one of the the fastest developing industries for aquaculture, but we slowed down a lot. Uh, and and in, in 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 our slowing down, other nations picked up. There's a lot of aggressive development in in Uganda, in Kenya, Zambia. Uh, now, matter of fact, the top three largest fish farms now are in Ke in the Eastern Africa side. You know. So they are contributing uh, a lot and in total uh, creating uh, over a million jobs, you know. So here in Ghana, the market specifically, the demand for fish in Ghana, it depends to, on who you are talking to. The ministry reports figures uh, between 350 to 500 tons. Politicians will, 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 will report figures 600 to 800, so it depends on who you're talking. And the FAO has their own information as well. But on the average, you can pay it around 450,000 uh, as the demand. But the actual production in Ghana is less than 150,000 tons mm -hmm. in total. The actual demand is less than 150,000. So we have a big demand there as well, minimum of 250,000 that we need to produce so there's a big room for are we able to meet it if we do our things right we can do we have the resources to meet it yes we have we have the one of the the best lakes in the world for producing fish and the best rivers uh, um, temperatures are very stable tilapia catfish require temperatures between 28 and 29 all year round and this is about what we have so we have we have a big potential to to produce this. The, if you look at the Volta River and Lake, for example, there is close to about the last time we calculated about twelve about two point five to three million gallons of 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 water going into the sea every minute. Mm. You know, and all of this could be used to create or produce fish to meet, meet this this gap, and that has the potential to create more than 10 million jobs along 10 million oh yes the demand is big the market size in ghana is about 940 million if we are able ever to meet the demand of 470,000 tons on the average it gives on today's price about 940 million uh, dollars mm. you know but if we take what is we are currently producing as a country now um uh, being 135, we are doing less than 100, 100 million dollars as an industry. So it depends on you as an investor or somebody who has an interest how much of this cake that you want to bite. A reminder you're still watching Prime Business. Anglo Gold Ashanti of Boise Mine has re emphasized its commitment to safeguarding the health and well being of residents in its host communities as part of its drive to sustain social economic development. Now, through its regular healthcare programs, the gold mining company has since 2021 provided medical support to over 33,000 residents within its operational catchment area. There is more in this report. The mini clinic is part of the Anglo Gold Ashanti Obwasi Mines 10 year social economic development plan with focus on improving the well being of residents. The company has since 2021 organized 15 health outreach programs, with more expected to be held under the decade long development plan. Free screenings for a variety of health concerns, including eye examination, malaria tests, diabetes screening dental assessments, mass dewormen, and screening for hypertension. Community Relations Manager Edmond Odueje believes improving the health care of the residents would facilitate revamping their socio-economic activities in the area. Health improvement, we believe that health is wealth. And we also understand that for our needs assessment, we realize that most of our community members, even though when they are sick, one, they don't have access to uh, quality health care, so they don't have even the money to be able to even afford the medical bills and all. 
So based on our needs assessment and with the collaboration with the district assembly, the health directorates, we decided to embark on uh, mini clinics whereby we take the hospital in this context to the, the doorsteps of our host communities so that people who ordinarily wouldn't be able to assess quality health care will be able to go, go through this process, get free medicating, get free screening, and then we'll be able to improve their health. We believe that when the health of the people are taken into consideration, it also helps in terms of the socioeconomic development. With commitment to enhance quality health care accessibility to host communities, the AGA is investing in the construction of modern health facilities. For many of these residents who sought medical care, it was a time well spent in a quest for solutions for their ailments. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel. Right quick. I truly appreciate your time with me, Pius Kojo Baka, for Prime Business for today. That's it for the bulletin. Prime Sports is next. I leave you with Commodities Updates.